Well, as for the other um, 96 odd percent, I mean, we've got things like gas and whatever that we export readily that we could probably use here. And we saw a story today I talked about earlier, you know, <laughs> Victoria is essentially running out of gas. I mean, how in a country like Australia do you run out of gas? But James Bowen said today, and I played the clip earlier, that he's ready to talk about this every day until the next election. I, I feel like they're kind of buying into the game that the coalition set up for them here. Well, as long as it's a mature conversation, you don't mind Bowen opening his mouth and having that uh, discussion about nuclear. Look, at the end of the <laughs> day, uh, three the targets have been set for, for... Yeah, well, that's true. But uh, the, the reality is that Australians are looking for a mature conversation. It's proof that we've matured as a country. We can have these debates. Uh, but by all means, we should have never, ever, ever blocked the ability for Australia to have nuclear in the first place. And sadly... That was a decision of Howard with the support of the Greens at that time. But, look, I've, I've got extended family that live in Biloela, one, one of the sites where the Calide Power Station is. I spoke to them just a week ago when this announcement was made and I said, how do you feel about it? And they just put, uh, simply, simply said, look, as long as we don't lose jobs in the area, we're very happy to see nuclear. And they're five kilometres away from that site. So... It's pretty obvious that people are open to the idea of nuclear. It's about time if we're to keep manufacturing in this country, we've got to have cheap energy. It will not come from solar. It won't come from wind. And uh, hydrogen, if you're worried about volatile uh, fuels out there, hydrogen is one of the most volatile, and yet we're looking to put a, a massive big plant down there in Gladstone. So, look, I'm glad people are open to this discussion about nuclear. Stephen, how can we justify uh, this big pay rise that, that Sam Most and the incoming Governor General is going to get? You know, seven hundred and nine thousand dollars a year. It's it's two hundred and fourteen grand more than David Hurley is getting right now. How is there an excuse for that in a cost of living crisis? Well, look, I, I'm not sure when the last substantive increase for the Governor General went through. I don't know whether they've been getting just the the small regular increases uh, but certainly I mean David Hurley proved it there's an enormous job that is being done and I think if you were to look at the independent tribunal uh, they would take into account the added responsibilities that uh, governor generals over the last 10 years have have been engaged in and there's been you know their, their compassionate work when we have national crises and and national floods and national uh, bushfires, and, and they've been there, they've represented us overseas. So all of these are important parts of the role, but I suspect that most of the, most of the work that uh, has been done has been adding up, and clearly the Independent Tribunal uh, decided that it was time to... Well, it's uh, not the Tribunal, this is a, a decision uh, of the government. Yeah. The government well, I, I said, I'm not sure whether it's a government... Or it is the no, set by the government. Sets its own this, set this, 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 this is set by the government. I mean, look, James, if they can tell me that the Governor General's workload has gone up 43% in the last three years, or last five years, sorry, which is what the, the, the pay increase will be, then maybe I could understand the argument. But for heaven's sake, 700 grand it's more than the Prime Minister's on, James. Ah, oh, Stephen, you've still got it. You should never have left the Senate, mate. Your BS <laughs> detectors right up there. It's so good, mate. Uh, look, look, this is looking after mates. This is Labor looking after their mates. This is a woman that doesn't even believe in the monarchy. Uh, look, call me a cynic, but I'd say this. I reckon this is Labor deliberately jacking the, the wages up. This is likely, in Labor's books, to be the very last Governor-General we'll have. I think this just feeds into the Republican debate. Why have we got to spend all this money on, you know, a Governor-General? Let's get rid of... Let's get rid of it and go to a Republic. That's what Labor's doing <laughs> no. here. And in the meantime, they're throwing everyone on the gravy train. Well, look, you know, we could we could get rid of the GG and we could go to a Republic, but you know what? It'd cost us a lot more than 700 k So if that's the choice I've got to make, yes. maybe it's enough to convince me to pay the 700 k Stephen Conroy, James Ashby, thank you so much for your time.